Lagpoma with Inner Fire. It's the fire from Lagpoma. We had an awesome intro to everything going on right now. We're holding today Pesach Shani. It's already been a really busy day for me personally. And thank God I'm very excited to join you together right now in our studio in Yerushalayim, in Jerusalem, our holy city. We don't take it for granted doing a little different view in the YouTube, a little bit more horizontal. We've got the vertical for the Facebook Live. We've got the audio for our Amunah as our future podcast. And thank God our studio is in function again this week. We haven't yet had the merit to go through the system. Please God, that will be ha- coming soon. But we do have the merit to have a nice um, edited version coming out, hopefully by the end of the week with our new staff member. The important point is that we have to be on fire this week. It's lag but Omer, Thursday night, Friday, exciting times. There's an energy in the world. You can feel it as we're Going out of this Corona challenge, things are opening up. It's Pesach Shani today. That gives us the opportunity to begin again, the renewal, and to taste that freedom, that chayrus, that freedom from all these restrictions, and to have a hope for the future that things are going to be open, that we can be able to connect in person with people we love. We can go to events, to concerts, to hear beautiful shirim like we had last night with Rav Shalom Arush Lita. This is his beautiful studio. We thank him. We thank all of you for giving us the opportunity to share these experiences together. And of course, with Dain Elgar, he translated beautifully. And of course, our special, special guest, Rav Moshe Weinberger Schlita, he was here in the studio just last night and it was an Aish, it was a fire from Aish Kodesh, that's his shul. We could feel the inner fire from such special words of Amuna and Chizuk and connection to Siddiquim and Chasidus. It's an honor to thank God to have began these beautiful Amuna classes together with you these last few years and specifically the last 35 Amuna classes of Rav Orish, and to have got to the point where we're meritorious to have a sponsored class for Rav Orish and Weinberger to be able to come into our studio through Zoom. Obviously having the musicians in person, having the guests in person, the speakers and the energy, the fire in the studio or even better like we're praying for to have those large shirim together where we're all thank God dancing together, holding hands and hearing the words of the righteous people in person. It's a whole nother level. But this is the beauty of what we've been learning all these weeks in this during this time. We've been learning about the inner light, the light of the soul, the united soul. This power is within us. And that's why I wrote in the notes, it's always important, take a look at the description. It says, join us live weekly. Yes, our Monday weekly class. We're just a few minutes late today. It's going to 3.30 generally. And by... That's me, Ellie Gold. So United Souls, that's the energy, that's the, the brand, that's the focus over here. And we're talking right now during these special seven weeks, these 49 days. Sphirsa Omer is a great time to grow together with inner fire. That's today's class. Unity and passion. We have to really be passionate about the life about giving over Torah, about connecting, having all these podcasts, having these moments to build content together. It has to be with passion. When you go to your job, if you're half asleep, you're not going to be able to really make a difference. To make a difference, it has to be with passion. And when you go to a relationship experience, when you want to meet with your soulmate or you want to meet with your friends and family, you will have to have passion. If you're like distracted, if you're not focused, as we've talked about in a many of of our relationship flow podcast and we put them out there relationship flow podcast is thank god we'll, we'll maybe we'll put it underneath as well at some point in the description but over there we're talking about focus we're talking about intimacy we're talking about experiencing real connection in our relationships to the point where we enter this eternal level of relationship i already spoke about it just this sunday and we're taking it to the next level please god with this week of lag baome where we get into the inner fire the passion that exists the, the experience should be filled with joy and power it shouldn't be something where we're just like you know like uh, going through the road the or rotes or you know, grinding but without the joy everything like thank god on a weekly now i go out for a jog with my wife but it should be with energy we should appreciate that we're jogging through the streets of jerusalem even if right now there's a fire in the streets of jerusalem in the not good way there's been riots and stuff we have to transform that fire into a fire for a hashem for 
for lichterkeit, for being inspired. That was the fire that came to Shimon Bar Yochai in the Holy Gezoa. The Zohar Kodesh is a light. And that was Rav Shimon's revelation. He should be, his merit should protect us. And we have the opportunity this year on Lag Bome to go to the Hadlachas, wherever we are in the world, to be part of those fires of Rav Shimon, that the fire should be directed towards heaven, should be lifting us up. When you look at a flame, I remember reading all those years ago in university, I, was, I think I was even in a bathtub, Reading, I didn't know much about Judaism back then. And I was sitting there reading this book about Jewish meditation. I mentioned it in these classes. And I looked in this book and I saw this beautiful concept of the power of meditating on the flame to be able to have the energy and the focus of just tuning into the fire that exists within the flame that it burns and the way we think of of a flame, how there's the different parts of the flame with the, the bluer part, which is the intense heat that's burning the wick, the goof, the, the physical aspect, and then transforming that oil or shemen, that wax, into a fire which goes heavenly with the reds and the yellow and the different colors. Of each one has a different meaning, and you focus on the fact that this fire is all going upwards because in the end, everything has a source. Everything has a root level. And that's one of the beautiful things I was talking about with my son-in-law, the Shabbos, on Pasha's Kedoshim, Achremos, Achremos Kedoshim. We were talking about how there's a fire and how everything has a root level. Not only is there a fire for Vodas Hashem, but there's also a root level, how there's an experience that everything goes back to its source and everything is centered. That's Rabbi Nachman's special light. Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi Nachman, Simcha. That's the kind of passion that the Siddiquim, where the Yiddish Kai, I was meritorious to be by Rav Simai Zibelberg, the energy, the fire he brought. Uh, Rav Moshe Weinberger, I remember years ago, used to quote him and he'd say about the fire, and, and that was the whole beautiful thing. I spoke about myself when I was with Rav Orish and Rav Weinberger in New York together, upon him, upon him, and they met each other. This was about two years ago or two and a half years ago on our Munatur 2018, I believe, and we went to the Shul of Eish Kodesh. And we had the opportunity to see Rav Orish and Rav Weinberger together. They walked around the shul and they met the, the community a little bit, some of the Rabbonim there. And one of the things I said over when they were looking at the beautiful, um, this artwork that's in the entrance of the shul, and it's a symbolic of the fire of, of that went on in the Holocaust and the Piazza Rebbe and the Eish Kodesh that he represented that fire that's igniting the whole community with passion for Judaism and they were talking about this so I said that Rav Oresh is represented by Sholem Sholem is his name but it's also the Gan of Sholem the whole idea of a Muna brings you to Sholem I even had a call last night about Sholem bias how important it is that we should when we're serving Hashem we should realize that serving Hashem is something especially with Sholem bias with how we talk it's a big part of it how we talk to a sham obviously a muna but how we talk to the soulmate how we talk to all the loved ones in our life that it should be words with satadishmai with heavenly help that inspire the relationship not damage the relationship that was one of the advices the rav gave us yesterday to someone on the phone after our muna class when our meetings and you guys once again are welcome to bring those muna class bring those meetings into your community into your home and to connect to the rav directly you have all the information how to do that but anyway we were in h kodish in the shul there in New York and we were talking to Rav Oresh and Rav Oresh is Sholem. Sholem is the aspect of, of uh, Shin. It's the, the Shin of Aish. And what's the Aleph of Aish? That's Emes. The Emes is Moshe Weinberger. He's someone who gives over truth. He's, his name is Moshe. Moshe Emes who saw Emes. And that was the idea that Moshe and Rav Sholem Rav Moshe and Rav Sholem brings together Aish the Aleph and the Shin, the Emes and the Sholem. It's a beautiful concept from the Shla Kodesh. That's who says this concept, this Rashi Tevis. The, the Emes and Sholem is Aish, is fire. And that's when you see the fire, like Baum, you should realize you're experiencing this Aish, this, this combination of Emes, of truth and, and peace. This is the, kind, the, the, real, the real hippie movement that people had love and peace, but they missed out the truth. They missed out the, the true connection. And I appreciate all the positive energy I'm getting from our friends there on Facebook Live. And I'd like to hear a little bit more from my YouTube friends. You have to just tell me how it's going. If you're able to hear me and the horizontal vibe is a good energy for you, to make the uh, viewing a bit more easier. But um, the point is that when you understand that when you're experiencing life with passion and it makes sense, it has 
it's in tune it's aligned with your goals and your dreams and what you're passionate about what you care about who you love what you're focused on the, oh thank you thank you for saying something on youtube appreciate it once again all you guys the, we're, we're, this is something we're community, communally experiencing. This is not something just for me to sit here and say some Torah. I'm happy to do that every day. <laughs> but at least once a week, we have the opportunity to join together and experience some of the love, some of the focus, some of the passion, some of the fire. This is the opportunity, and it truly is an, a, a real merit. And I appreciate, once again, you guys partnering. I've seen, thank God, these last many months, many partners in our Muna is our future future tour thank god online and it really is appreciate the links always below you can just press on it there's where to donate there's where to get the svarim there's where to reach out direct you can join our whatsapp group this is aligning with what we're doing here so the amuna class the amuna content is something that goes global and that's the hope that the fire, the Aishali of Rabbi Nachman, the Aish, the passion of the Siddiquim should go out to the world and ignite the world. Because all we're hearing right now on the media is all the, God forbid, is all the problems, is all the pain, all the sorrow, all the loneliness, all the dysfunction and, and how the technology world looks more and more like it's going to take over and take away that passion, that fire that of the soul, that soulful way of experiencing life. It wants to reduce that. And our job obviously is to not allow that to take place. And how do we do that individually? Each one of us can light ourselves up. And then once we're alight, we have the power to light up another person. And that's the idea of Lagboma. We see that fire, how all the souls come at that moment of the Adlacha, when the Siddiquim light up those fires around the world, and the world has an experience of light, has an experience. It's, it's like when you're looking from these space stations and rockets are going up into, into the sky, and they're looking down and they see these the cities at nighttime, and they see how lit up they are from the the electric lights it's even more so on the spiritual level when you look down to the world on Lag Baoma this Thursday night and you see the light that's pouring out from the world due to the fire of Shimon that we're turning darkness into light that was his purpose that was the the key to understand the creation the whole of this world was made just for us to transform darkness to light so we're transforming pain to joy we're transforming all our suffering to fulfillment to understand that there's a purpose to everything that we're going through and that the panemius the inner level of torah the inner aspects the soulful level of torah is communicating to us clarity and warmth and love and connection that's Rabbi Shimon's light. As we heard from Moshe Weinberg, his beautiful stories. You go to Shirim and Wayu Torah, you see over there beautiful Shirim and stories, especially around like Boma, of the love that Ahava Hashem's pouring onto the world. There's a tremendous revelation of love. Hoja Behod, Kodesh Kadoshim. We're going into the inner levels, the inner sanctums, into the inner holy of holies, inside the soul level. And that's the where Rabbi Shimon is taking us as a as a people, as a as a humanity, even the whole world now is connected into this. People can watch it. I mean, one of the most for me powerful moments for for the Jewish year, the Jewish calendar and for the world is when there's moments of Adlacha and you can watch them. You can watch it in Moran, you can watch the Sadiqim light, the Tulsa Avon Mitzak Rebbe, Tulsa An Rebbe, with Shalom Morish, obviously, you can watch him light in in uh, in Rabbi Rashbi and last year that he was able to make it with a few few meritorious people who were there and then you have the Biana Rebbe and you have all the different Siddiquim that go and light and then all the different Chotzeris, all the different courtyards around the world, they light in their own courtyards in Bresa Meshurim, everywhere there are Bells and Satmar and Chabad and Chabad is doing all the mitzvah vans, mitzvah mobiles and bringing the light of the Rebbe and, and their Torah to the whole world and literally <laughs> with all the shlichim and thank God each person in, in their own situation according to their situation whether they're Jewish or not everyone has the power to connect to the inner light of Torah nowadays it's available and the fact that we're talking about it here is a, is a <laughs> it's, it should resonate with you that this is happening it's not just uh, maybes and theories. This is reality that Hashem's given, even me, the fact that I even know any of this concepts. Shalom from Ireland. Wow. 
the fact that we I even know any of this. I grew up like secular. I grew up uh, unaware. I didn't even know what Lag Boma was. I didn't know Rib Shimon. I didn't even know what the Talmud was. I didn't know the Zohar for sure not. Kabbalah, you know, people hear about a little bit thanks to a few famous people who made it famous. But whether they learn it or not, it's something else mysticism people you know think of the east or something but to know that in the Torah there's such a light that can transform the whole world of darkness into light there's such a power that Rib Shimon showed that you can uh, save the whole world from judgment just by connecting to these inner aspects by connecting to the Panimis of Torah to understand that Hashem's love is so deep and so profound and so forgiving especially also when you go into this week's Pasha's Pasha's Emil and you see that in Zman in time there's there's so much light. There's all these different festivals that light us up. And there's different kinds of people. There's Kohanim. I didn't even know that I was how important it was to be a Kohen. And I'm a Kohen. Hashem gave me that opportunity that I was born a Kohen, a priest of the Jewish people and hopefully of the world. And that's something which I have to live up to on my level. That there's a certain le- uh, responsibility and, and to bless everyone with love everyone on a daily level as, as a descendant from Aaron or Cohen. This is an, a real thing. This is not, you know, like people, there's all this fake media people talk about. This is real media. This is real truth. This is based on a Masoira, a tradition that goes all the way back to Aaron or Cohen. I'm a descendant from Aaron or Cohen, who was the brother of Moshe Rabbeinu, who both were together there at Kabbalah Satoira, which we're preparing for now. This is not something Boba Meisters, as they say. This, this is not some old stories. This is real. And it's happening all the way that someone who even didn't even know that he was part of this wonderful legacy is now, thank God, have the merit to sit with Rav Oresh, with Moshe Weimuk, to sit with Dianel, to sit with these Hosha special people. And next week, please God, Charlie Harari is going to come with his tremendous energy and give us that guiding force, how to go into business, how to be Makadish the world, Shem Shemayim, you saw it, Sadik, you'd be able to make this world. Hello from New York, to get this world to a place on our daily level where you have a more expanded mindset. He's very much into less plasticity. I don't even know how to say it myself. But the idea of getting your mind into a more flexible, um, elevated way of thinking so that you, when you go into business, you go into relationships, you're able to experience, like he has a Pursuit of Happiness podcast. We're going to go into that next week, hopefully, a little bit with Charlie. And we're going to have Yosef Danil. Thank God, after Lag Boma, there's already a massive sweetening of the judgment. We're no longer in the, according to most Hagen, we're no longer in the morning part. And the music, for some Hasidim, yes, the Fida Arizo, it's the whole 49 days. Okay, so there is the Arizo, who was a holy, holy person, and many Hasidim hold that. They don't do the haircut still, and me personally, that's been my custom since I had the merit to connect to Hasidim more than, um, I don't know, 20 years ago or something. I've been trying to keep the 49 days about music and not to cut the hair, etc. But for most most of the Jewish people, it's 33 days. It's like Baomer. There's a hamtaka. There's a sweetening. The weddings begin. The music begins. People can have haircuts. People can take care of themselves. And the mourning period, because what happened was with Shimon, basically, he he's represents that continuation from Rabbi Kiva, his Rebbe. Rabbi Kiva was able to bring the whole oral Torah, the Torah Shabbat Peh, the passion and the, the love he had. After Rechach Mecha, their car, God of Torah, as he taught, that you have to have love between each other. It's not just some intellectual thing. It's you have to feel the love between, for another Yid. Like the Rav Moshe Weinberger once has a beautiful story said over on Lag Boma, how the Avas Yisrael, this, this holy vision of the Rebbe, used to go up to the most stinking Yid, the Yid that smelt the worst, the, the person that was the most far away, the person that no one wanted to be around, and he'd go up and say, oh, Yid, another Yid, and he'd kiss that person and he'd kiss his 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 begotim, his clothing, and give him love and say, Yid is a Jew, it's a, it's a light, it's a licht. Every Jew's a licht, a light to the world, a light unto the nations. That's our job. We're not here to sit and moan and get pulled down into the sadness of the world. We're here to light up the world. Just think of Rabbi Nachman. When you think of Rabbi Nachman, you don't think of someone half asleep or like, you know, you think of a fire. You think of Rib Shimon, you think of an f- even bigger fire. You think of Moshe Rabbeinu, you think of like light and taking like the all Kito of this hidden light just shining outwards. That's when you think of these righteous people and that's within each of every one of us. That was Rib Shimon's 
message to the world. That was Rabbi Nachman's message, as Amalek Haibaudi, that everyone has a divine spark, and that divine spark is filled with goodness, and every single relationship you have, every single person is filled with that inner light, and for sure you have to face your issues and deal with life, but that's the beauty of transforming darkness into light. That is the purpose when you're dealing with life. It's not a punishment. It's not all this negative for way of thinking about life it's an opportunity it's a challenge it's not a god forbid a, a, a crazy uh, epidemic the way it's been made out to be so much more negative than it is it's an opportunity this whole time that we've had and thank god this week is our first live show that i've been blessed to book for nissen black in svat overlooking Miran. i mentioned it in my unity flow podcast an opportunity to see nissen black live in svat the full hour concert to hear some of his new tracks with a DJ and hopefully bring his family and have beautiful Shabbos and stuff. I had the merit to book this with the Chabad, uh, Chabad friends over there. And it's an opportunity to, to bring a music and energy back into the world in person so people can sing, can people rejoice, people can experience the soul level together. There's such a unifying experience of singing music together. And that's what we can do this like Bama Bokhshem. That's the kind of energy that's coming into the world. And we can bring it into our Torah. We can bring it into our life. Wherever we are in the world, everyone, thank God, now we're all interconnected. This is the beauty of the internet. Using it on an even higher level now after being in a situation where we had to work out our content. We had to be more inner. We had to be more at home. We had to be more, you know, in terms of with our loved ones, our closer loved ones. We had to develop and strengthen our relationships in front of us. We couldn't fly off as much. We couldn't travel. Me personally, I haven't left the country for over a year and a half now, and I'm missing my family so much. But we have the opportunity, even in such a situation, to take all that time. Personally, I wrote a book, United Souls, to use that time to develop ourselves and then bring that message now back out when we go back more into the world again to bring that that renewal that energy and that's Pesach Sheini this whole week of Hod is just a no, whole new level of of development of heart of shining from that humility that we've had of the situation we're in the challenges we've had it causes us to shine like an olive the more you squeeze it the more the oil comes out and the more you can light up the world you can pour that oil onto the fires of of Lag Boma and make a bigger, bigger fire. And this is the kind of energy that we have to bring into our life. Be passionate. We have to feel warmed up by the connection, the love. I feel like Hashem's hugging us this year. Feel, feel the warmth. Allow ourselves to open our hearts, to let go a little bit. As it says in the Chabad time, to be bit a little bit more, to have a more, um, less, uh, more connection to Hashem and less ego. More connection to love and less, God forbid, hatred more connection to truth and less connection to this this lying world around us that's trying to fool us into or put us to sleep i don't know what we have to wake up we have to be alive so that's the class today for Lagba Omer for the Aish, this inner fire that's within, and it's for the whole year. Hanukkah is coming up uh, again every year. It gives us that renewal of the connection to that light, that hidden light. And also every Shabbos, when we light the Shabbos candles, and all the time, every Yotzai, we light candles. And every time we see fire, we should remind ourselves that we have this passion, we have this flame, we have a soul that's flickering. And that's why people shake when they're praying. They shake back and forth. And there's like a fire. It's like a flame. You're, you're inspired. <laughs> Unity inspires. It should inspire you how, how unified we truly are and how divine we all are made. And that's the kind of energy. That's where Shimon, he came out of the cave and he saw the Jew on Shabbos with his Shoma Vazocha, the, the Hadassim. And he said, Shoma Vazocha, these are the, each one's for my, my two different aspects of Shabbos. That the, eventually that we have to understand that we're in the time right now where we're going to see the Yom Shakula Shabbos. It's going to be always Shabbos. And it's going to become a whole different level of world. The whole world's going to go up. It's going to be elevated. And a lot of the pain and all this, this, this doom and gloom mindset is going to be switched around. It was, it was nothing to worry about. All the war, potential wars and famine that people were worrying about. We didn't have to worry because God is kind.
and God does everything for the good, Hashem does everything for the good, and therefore everything in history was just leading us towards the Yemosa Mashiach, the Yom Shakuli Shabbos, the time when we're in Shabbat, and we have a base of English, and light is in the world, and das is in the world, people have true knowledge, and the kind of connection, this is what we're praying for on a daily level, Lag Ba'om is an opportunity to pray for this ultimate future, for that we could be part of it, and that we could bring that light before it comes, before that ultimate future comes, bring that into the world now, Bring that energy, that passion, the the of Mashiach, the light of the Messiah, to bring that light into the world now. That it should not, God forbid, create division. It should only create unification. It should only create clarity of thought. It should only create love and relationships that are positive and uplifted. It should give us Shalom Bias. It should give us Hinoch, the, the light of the Sadiq and the light of Rav Shimon and the light of Mashiach and the light of what of our own souls should just inspire us to live happy, Amunah-filled lives where we can talk to God with clarity and truth. We can experience everything we're doing with clarity and love and oneness. That's the kind of energy when we're making a blessing on food. That's the kind of energy when we go after this year and back into our daily life to realize that it can be inspired and within a fire. It's, there's, it's, that fire can never be extinguished. It's impossible, the soul level, to ever be put out. The 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 uh, Nazis and Machshimam they saw in the Holocaust the fire of of the Jewish soul and the fire of the soul of humanity that that can never be extinguished as much as they tried, and and there's so many stories that prove that. We have to believe in that. We have to live it. We have to make it real. Bring it into reality. Bring that kesa, the panemius level, into our daily life. Bring that inner level into our daily, life, inner Torah into our life, and to realize that we have a soulful, eternal connection that's inspired, and it goes to the holiest, holiest of place, and it brings back out into our life, into our world, into our relationships, into everything we're doing, and we should all be blessed with that, with everything we need, with every, with our income, with peace of mind, happiness joy and I'm looking forward please God after Lag Boma to join us again in a new a new world a world of Simcha and joy please God as we get ready for Charlie Harari and Yosef Daniel and please God another Muna class and we keep sharing our content here thank you please share this bring a Muna global bring the light of Shimon to the world our main our main and I can't wait to see you again with a renewed spirit and an inner fire thank you